Hey guys, how's it going? Ezekiel the Barber back with another video for you. Uh, let's go ahead and get right into it. Thank you for tuning in to Ezekiel the Barber TV. Uh, so today's haircut, we're going to be doing a ball taper with a lineup uh, starring the homie. It's my guy right here. Uh, so it's time. Got to get my man right. Uh, just got to get him back in good standing. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get right into this haircut today. Now I like to start by kind of finding out uh, kind of how they want it. I, you know, I kind of get right down to the details. What are we doing on top? Um, I know we're doing a taper, but what type of taper are we doing? Is this a high taper? Is this a mid taper? Is this a short, uh, low taper? Um, you know, all of these questions um, are definitely critical in achieving uh, the right haircut for the client, getting as close to what they want as possible. That's the main objective, should be the main goal for the barber. Uh, to give the client what they want. So I definitely like to uh, start and make sure I have a good idea of what they want before I get started. Now, with African-American hair, you always, you know, everybody's heard of the Afro pick, or you should have, shame on you if you haven't. But, you know, you definitely have to pick out uh, the froze. You gotta get the, uh, you know, that hair right. That's very important if you wanna achieve a really balanced and even cut. Um, African-American hair, um, you know, likes to uh, curl back up and pop in right after you uh, pick it out. So it's very critical that, you know, you pick that hair out. Um, now, some clients do have uh, sensitive scalps. So I like to find out if my client has a really sensitive scalp, um, if they say no or they're okay. If they say yes, I like to take it a little easy. Um, but other than that, you know, uh, that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using the Wall Sterling 4 Clipper. Now I have no clip on this clipper. Uh, this client wants a, uh, a high taper. So I kind of start at this diagonal um, uh, guideline. As you can see here, I balded it out and it kind of has a slant to it from the top to the bottom. So basically the way I achieved that was using that clipper lever all the way closed, which is gonna give you the closest to ball look as possible. Now I didn't wanna go too high up, um, kinda in the region that I am now. Now my next guideline, I'm just gonna go to the number one guard and open that lever all the way up. Now once I open this lever all the way up, I'm just gonna bump out the bottom line. Now since you know there is no bottom line to bump out when we went bald, for the first guideline, there is no need, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna set another guideline. I'm using the clipper all the way closed just to kind of bolt that first bottom out. This is a ball taper once again. Now, in this case, I'm opening the lever all the way up. So I went about a inch up, half an inch up. I'd say about a half an inch up from my last guideline uh, that I bolted everything out to. So here, I'm just gonna open that lever all the way up, set the next guideline and then bump out the bottom line, which you see me doing now. Close that lever up, attack right at the bottom line. Don't wanna go too high because you're gonna take that guideline away that you just put in. So now that I set those two guidelines, it's time for the number one guard. So I'm gonna go about another inch or half an inch up, as you can see here, and uh, combing everything out just to kind of ensure what's cut and see what hasn't been cut. Nice and easy strokes, you don't have to go too hard. And I'm just gonna go nice and smooth. Now you don't wanna go too hard into the afro, just kinda wanna chisel away at the hair, make sure it has a nice uh, smooth transition. Now I like to cut to a look, so that means that all the work that I'm going, going to be doing with this haircut is not gonna be in one specific spot, in one specific region. So I'll do a little bit of the haircut, kind of see how things are looking. Once they're coming together, then I'll go to the next guideline and then I'll come back and clean things up as the haircut goes along. And then this is kind of my system. Now everyone has their own system. Some people like to, you know, do everything portions at a time and sections at a time. Um, but, you know, this is just to kind of give you an idea how I achieve this haircut, just the knowledge. All right, so once again, I like to start by picking everything out, combing the hair out. This makes it easier for the blade to kind of get in there and do work. Sometimes if you don't do that, it'll kind of pull the hair out. Very uncomfortable for the client. So uh, that blade is all the way closed, gonna give me that close to bald stubbly look. 
Now I'm just gonna open that guard all the way up with the zero guard on. Now that was kind of a fast process, so now I'm at the one and a half guard. I'm just going a little higher with that lever all the way open. The closer I am to the bottom or to the baldness of uh, that taper, with that one and a half guard, I'm just gonna close that lever up. Okay, the closer I am to the top of his afro with that one and a half guard, just gonna open that up. Still going about an inch um, with my guidelines. You know, you don't really wanna go over an inch, inch and a half with your guidelines. I like to stay within about a half inch to an inch range with all of my guidelines. So once again, I'm going back uh, to the back of the uh, taper just to kind of clean things up a little bit, make things a little bit more smoother. I, once again, I like to cut to a look. So I just have that, uh, see a little weight here that I wanted to kind of clean up. Not going too high, kind of being, you know, really cautious. Uh, you can't put that hair back, so you just kind of want to make sure that, you know, you're just really cautious when you cut. Make sure that you know you cut what you're intending to cut and not cutting what you're not intending to cut. All right, so as you can see here, there's a little weight um, in the taper, little dark lines. You know, I can definitely make those transitions a little smoother. Um, my main objective here is to kind of, uh, you know, keep in touch with the mirror. I have this client uh, face towards the mirror, even though you can't see it. Um, but that mirror is a really good, you know, uh, second opinion to how this haircut is going. Sometimes your eyes can be deceiving and the mirror definitely kind of helps you out with seeing, you know, if your eyes are really seeing what, you know, they think they're seeing. So thank God for the mirrors. So right here, I'm just doing what's called a freehand technique. I don't really advise doing this unless you're, you know, really skilled or, you know, you have really, um, you know, sturdy hands. But this is a good technique uh, for African-American hair to kind of chisel at the hair. Uh, sometimes um, I will put a guard on here, maybe a one guard or a one and a half guard, and then just kind of do the same technique. And the guards are exactly what, you know, they are, they're guards. So it's, it's there and designed to uh, guard, you know, certain amounts of hair that you want to take off and certain amounts of hair that you don't want to take off you know just having that guard kind of gives you that extra added room so you know you don't have to air as much but with this technique you definitely have less room for air so you have to have really steady hands but i like this technique because it's straightforward right to the point you know it chisels the haircut exactly the way you want it so that's why i like this you know um, it could be a little bit more time consuming when you put a guard on. Um, but this is a really straightforward approach. If you have a sturdy hand and you're very uh, skilled with the clippers, this is definitely a good technique to use. When I created this channel, I definitely wanted to give the viewer that natural uh, feel, kind of to see exactly how you know the strokes are used in the barbershop kind of how to actually do it without any sped up clips or anything like that i just thought it was really important to show um you know the viewers uh kind of the natural stroke how how these haircuts were really achieved in real time I just want to use the blow dryer to blow dry any loose hair off the clients. And we're just going to continue on shaping uh, the haircut. Now I like to just kind of make sure everything's even. Uh, really important to once again use that mirror, especially on afros, to kind of see if everything's even. Once again, your, your eyes could deceive you, so definitely want to always want to get a second opinion. The mirror is your friend. Always want to pick that hair out. Yeah. Now, this client wanted to grow his hair out. So the trim that I'm basically giving him here is just a really light trim. Any of the little hairs that stick up or the dead um, hairs, um, I like to kind of clip those off. 
make sure those are off to kind of take away from the look of the haircut. Now, normally this client just likes to leave his hair in this short afro look. He's trying to grow it out a bit more. So, you know, I'm not looking to take a lot of hair off of uh, this haircut. Just looking to do a slight trim. He's still looking to grow it out. Um, so, you know, just want to keep everything nice and intact. All right, looking pretty good here. Now, here I'm just doing a little outline work using the Babyliss trimmers. Uh, this is the silver and black um, trimmers with the graphite blade. Definitely love this clipper. Always want to pull that ear, use the edge of the clipper just to kind of get behind the ear. This is the technique that I use to kind of keep that ear out of harm's way. Definitely important. Never want to cut or clip that ear, which you can easily do, especially with sharpened blades or what have you. So this is just cleanup work. I'm just using uh, that Babyliss trimmer to kind of bald everything out going into that ball taper, making everything look that much more cleaner. All right, it's looking pretty good right there. Right, everything's looking pretty good. Everything's kind of coming together there. Once again, just want to kind of pull that ear a little bit. Anytime you get around that ear for the cleanup work. And I like to use that direction right there for some reason. Um, when you go up or down, it doesn't get it as uh, clean as going east or west. All right, so just using those Babyliss trimmers once again to um, do the cleanup work. We did the right side already. Just want to keep my work balanced, do the opposite side. All right. A lot of those neck hairs like to be right in that region right there. So you always want to make sure you get those. Pull that ear, kind of get behind there. This is just really showing you the system that I use. Now everybody's going to develop their own system, but this is just giving you the education on kind of how I achieve this look. Using the corner of the clipper to get right in that region there. All right, I like to go up and down as well as east and west in that uh, region. All right, just want to be really thorough. That definitely makes for some of the more cleanest cuts. All right, haircuts coming together. Things are looking a lot better from a man. I want to kind of clean these hairs up a little bit. Anything that takes away from the haircut. You have to have a really keen eye when you're down here too. Some of those little surviving hairs like to survive. So you always want to make sure you double, triple, and quadruple check, you know, that area. If you're looking to take the hair off, there's, you know, definitely some survivors in there. And as you can see, I'm going north, south, east, and west. Have a good one, sir. All right, so everything's coming together. It looks like all we have to do is pretty much his uh, front lineup, uh, maybe even line up his mustache. Uh, everything else is coming together. Now, right before I do the lineup, I like to kind of pick those hairs out, go really easy on the lineup. Right now, the trimmers that I'm using um, is basically the Andis cordless trimmer. Really good. Um, trimmer for lining up or beard work or what have you and once again it is cordless so you don't have to worry about you know cords or what have you getting in your way definitely gives you uh, complete flexibility this is how I basically line my client up I like to kind of keep everything even whatever I do on the right I like to do on the left and I like them looking as close to possible um, you know, as, as close to each other as possible. Left has to look like the right and vice versa. Basically. Right, so you don't want to have to dig into your client's uh, lineup. You don't want to have to take them uh, super far back. I like to stick with the natural lineup. You know, the however way, you know, it was given to them. Um, I like to just, you know, straighten a few little lines up unless they tell me otherwise. You know, if they tell me, hey man, 
can you get in there and you know make things a little bit more crispier or precise or kind of you know take my line up just back a little hair you know I don't mind you know clients you know it's not a lot of these guys it's not their first time in the barbershop it's not their first rodeo so they know how they like it you know so I like to keep it as natural as possible but clean you know nice and clean don't like to dig into that lineup much and that's basically what you see me doing here Just want to have a really soft touch doesn't require a uh, really hard you know touch or anything you don't have to dig into the skin the clippers do a really good job of you know cutting just a reminder now this is the technique that i use uh, in the corners just to kind of get those corners uh, pretty sharp and get any little fuzzies that might be there. Get those out of there. All right. Okay, everything's uh, pretty much looking how it net normally looks when I cut this individual's hair. Just always want to make sure everything's uh, looking clean. Yeah, looks a lot better. Man's about ready. So here I just like to take the time out to just, uh, once again, just go over my work. I love the Andis Masters Clippers. Uh, in all my videos, you probably see me using this as one of my finishing clippers. Um, it's cordless. It's a classic clipper. That blade is amazing. Um, it definitely gives you a really uh, clean look. So I, um, I like to definitely finish cleaning up any haircut normally with this clipper. Right now I just have that lever all the way open. Now I'll just basically use the same uh, process with these clippers that I did with the wall clippers or any other clippers that I might use. Um, um, for example, if I used a one guard in one region, I'll go back to the one guard when I, you know, finish cleaning up my fade with, uh, with this master's clipper. If I'm using a two guard in a region, I'll go clean it up with a two guard. You know, I just like to follow the same system that I initially started with, no matter what clipper I'm using, basically. And once again, I'm just using the Andy's master's clipper and my um, system to just kind of clean things up. I like to kind of, before I line that mustache up, just kind of comb it down. I'm using the Andy Slimline Pro. Um, I find these clippers to be really comfortable in this uh, area. The lips and, and, and the neck area, very sensitive. So, you know, I, I find this clipper to, to be a really good uh, clipper for lining up, uh, doing like lineup work, especially on kids as well, or um, mustaches or beards. This is definitely a, uh, one of my favorites. Right here, I'm just uh, looking to get those lines nice and crispy, a little cleaner. Now, typically this client likes to sponge his hair. Sometimes he'll just rock the natural here. Um, sometimes he'll, you know, he'll have me do it right here in the barber shop. Sometimes he'll say, nah, don't worry about it. I'm just gonna go home and shower, you know, save yourself the trouble. Uh, it literally depends on the day. All right, so here I'm just cleaning up the mustache a bit. Saw a few hairs sticking out, so I'm using the one guard with the Sterling 4 uh, clipper just to kind of clean that area. You don't have to go hard, just kind of really soft. And just relining it up. All right, everything's uh, looking pretty good here. Now, haircuts, just like life, is always a work in progress. So, you know, you're going to spend, you know, time just fixing up areas, making areas look better. Now, let's keep in mind, you only have so much time, uh, you know, with each client. Um, so, you know, within the allotted time that you're given, you know, you're definitely going to be um, kind of, you know, doing uh, touch up work to try to make things look that much better for them until they're, you know, until the time is over. I sure wish we could spend all day with these clients, you know, getting them 
uh, looking the best that we possibly could, getting at that, you know, getting out that perfect cut. Um, some people are able to get out perfect cuts in 30, 35 minutes. Some aren't, you know. Um, it all depends on the barber. It all depends on the skill. There's definitely a lot of uh, factors that kind of go into that. So right here, I'm just using the Babilis, uh hair trimmers just to kind of get all the neck hairs uh, out of there, clean up that area really good. Definitely very important. Now, I like to save this for last. Uh, since the haircut is just about over, I just think that it's a convenient time to do it. I like to go left, right, up and down, kind of be really thorough with that. And as well as the neck area, you know, the Senex strip and the cape covered this portion of his neck during the haircut. So once the haircut is just about over and I take care of the neck area, I like to take care of this portion as well, just to kind of be really thorough. All right, so just attempting to clean up the taper a little bit. Um, thought it might be a better idea to go just a little bit higher. So I just slap that one guard on, open that clipper up all the way, and now I'm just taking that guideline a little bit higher. So I'm just going a little bit higher on my guidelines, just going back through the process. And once again, I, you know, I do cut to a look. So I just, you know, as long as everything uh, looks good uh, to me, looks good to the client, then, you know, we're pretty good to go. So a few darker areas, I just kind of wanted to uh, even out a little bit more. So I'm going over those areas. but. Uh, more than anything, everything's looking uh, kind of the way, like I said, that it normally looks. Just wanted to go a little higher on the taper. All right, looking pretty good there. Now, anytime that I normally do something like this, I like to go back and uh, reline the sides up. It makes everything a lot cleaner. Now I'm just using uh, that Andis Masters cordless clipper with a one guard. Uh, that lever's all the way open. The closer that I am to his afro, the closer that I am to um, you know the bald or that stubble look, then I'll close that lever. Now right here we're just relining him uh, him up with the cordless Babilis trimmers. Now this just kind of puts that detail uh, look in, in, into the haircut. Makes everything looks uh, look a lot cleaner. There it is. There, everything's looking pretty smooth. Just gonna line both sides up. All right, all right. Just get these little uh, hairs out that might be there. Other than that, everything's looking pretty good. This is kind of where you know where we started. How he came in looking before. Boom. This is the current. This is how we're living now. So uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time. Take care, like, subscribe, share, help somebody out now. Thundercats Entertainment.